All right, hello and welcome. Uh, we are looking at chapter 24, and this is the statistics uh, modeling our world curriculum uh, designed for AP statistics. In chapter 24, uh, we are going to look at a comparison of means. And so here's the sort of an intro problem to look at here. Um, we have two uh, samples from uh, looking at several different pizzas sold by two national chains. Um, and so each of these numbers represents a pizza and the saturated fat content in that pizza. Now, the question is, uh, oops, skip something. The question is, is do the two pizza chains have a significant difference in the means, uh, in the mean of saturated fat? So, uh, looking at significant meaning like a statistically significant difference, uh, or are they the same? Uh, so we need to be able to, uh, to be able to make this, um, this jump to do a, to tell if it's a, a statistically significant difference. Um, we need to be able to do some form of hypothesis test, which thus far we have not looked at how to compare to means in that sense, in, uh, in inference. Now we have looked at it in terms of just a simple sample. Uh, way back when, I believe it's in chapter four, uh, we used these uh, box and whisker plots to compare the two groups side by side. This, however, is only for a, the sample. We can compare the sample with the sample. Uh, we cannot generalize this to a larger population uh, by just looking at the single sample. And so we need to take that initial analysis um, and make a, do a hypothesis test looking at a different type of parameter of interest here, uh, very similar to how we did two proportions to be able to extend it to a population. So, um, we need to take some of this information uh, about our standard deviations from chapter 23 and uh, make it work for a difference. And uh, so you'll remember that uh, for independent random quantities, we always add the variances. So last chapter when we were looking at the, the standard error uh, for a mean, uh, we were looking at the sample standard deviation or the population standard deviation over the square root of n. Uh, but if we are comparing the difference, uh, we need to add the variances of this, and that's the result you get when we add the variances. Um, because remember, we square it, and then we uh, square root it, and that's what we've got here. Okay, so uh, in order to look at the standard deviation between the difference between two sample means, uh, with this would be the formula that we get. Um, however, just like before, we don't know the true population standard deviation, so we estimate it with the sample, and when we estimate it with the sample, we add a little bit of variation, so we need to account for that variation by using the T model instead of the Z model. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Because we're working with means and estimating the standard error of the difference using data, um, again, we should be using the student's T model. Uh, the confidence interval that we build using these calculations is called a two-sample T interval uh, for the difference of means. And the hypothesis, hypothesis test we use is called a two-sample T test. Everything that we know about confidence intervals and hypothesis tests here is remaining the same. So when the conditions are met, the standardized sample difference between the two means is this. So there's the test statistic, my sample, minus the mean over the standard deviation. It's the same format for our t value <coughs> that we've always had. It's just that our test statistic is now the difference of the means, and our mean is now the difference of the means. 
standard error is the difference within the standard error. This standard error formula that we talked about a moment ago is what we're plugging in here uh, to find that test statistic. Uh, when we are doing a hypothesis test, um, our null hypothesis is that the change is zero, uh, that there is no difference between the two. So our null hypothesis will always be something like that, uh, which means that this statistic, this uh, uh, part of the difference here will always be zero. Um, and uh, so we've got our sample mean for the first sample minus the sample mean from the second sample minus zero over the standard error of the sample, uh, the, excuse me, the sample mean of the first minus the sample mean of the second. Again, that's the formula that calculates that standard error. When the conditions are met and the null hypothesis is true, the statistic can be closely modeled by the student's T model with a number of degrees of freedom given by a special formula. I am not showing you that special formula, at least not in this video, uh, because it is a monster. It is a mess of a formula to do that. We're gonna use technology to do it. Um, we use that model to obtain a p-value, just like we've always done with hypothesis tests. Just like we've always done with confidence intervals, um, we're taking test statistic, plus or minus the margin of error. It just happens to be that the margin of error in this case is uh, the critical T value with a certain degree of freedom times the standard error, which is this sample one over population one plus that's squared, sample two squared over population two. That's the formula that goes there. Um, that critical T value depends on the particular confidence level that you specify and the number of degrees of freedom, which we get from the sample size, uh, and again, that special formula, which like I said, we will use technology to find. So let's actually put this into practice here. Um, oh, I'm sorry, before we do that, let's talk about assumptions and conditions. Um, the assumptions and conditions are very similar. Uh, we have our randomness and sample size, which are we are current on all of them. How we check them is different. Um, and we also need uh, independent data. So uh, randomization condition, were the data collected with a suitable randomization? Um, we need to check that to make sure. That is true about every test. Uh, the nearly normal condition, which is what we call our sample size, which is our sample size for a means test. Um, we have to check that for both groups, uh, both groups of data need to be nearly normal in order for us to continue on with the test. A violation by either one violates the condition. Remember that has to do with sample size. Small samples need to be fairly normal, right? Fairly normal. Uh, large sample sizes, uh, okay to be not perfect. Uh, the larger the sample size, the more okay it is to not be perfect. Finally, the last assumption condition we need to meet on this one is that the two groups we're comparing are independent of each other. And that means that the, there's no collusion, that one is not influencing the other. So let's go ahead and do it uh, using the pizza problem that we had a moment ago. So. Uh, same process we're always going to follow, hammock, H-A-M-C, hypothesis, assumptions, conditions, mechanics, and conclusion. Our hypothesis is first, the null hypothesis, uh, as we said, uh, we're looking at the difference in means, so the difference between mu1 and mu2, and we're saying that that's equal to zero, that there is no difference between them. And in this case, we were saying, is there a statistically significant difference between the two? Which means our alternative hypothesis is going to be does not equal zero. So there's my set of hypotheses for this. Um, my assumptions and conditions. Uh, it did state in the previous that uh, randomization has been stated in the problem stem. So 
So our randomization is good. We need to check nearly normal, which means we need a sketch of the histograms. So let's uh, back out of this for a moment so that we can get a sketch of the histograms. Um, I'm using TI-84 software to do this. I have already gone through and uh, in my lists, I have put that pizza data that we had from the previous one. So we need to check the histogram here. Um, so we go second y equals stat plot. Uh, we want to do a histogram of list one. And that's all ready to go. So then we hit zoom stat. And we get that histogram, which uh, is fairly normal. Uh, it's got a kind of a big mean there in the middle, but that one's pretty good. So I'm not gonna, I'm not too concerned about that one. Uh, we're gonna want to draw a sketch of that when we're uh, doing our assumptions and conclusions over there. So we'll do that here in a moment. Let's go ahead and check the other one. Uh, the other list was in list two, so we'll put that there. Also, we're going to then be done with zoom stat. That one's not really normal, but the sample size is large enough here. We've got a nice medium sized sample that we can probably get away with it, right? The sample size is large enough that even though that's not perfectly normal, it's not heavily skewed in a certain way. Um, so that is going to be okay, right? It's, it's not perfectly normal, but our sample size being the size that it is, we can get away with it being um, not perfect. So let's um, let's do a quick sketch of those two things that we drew that we saw. Uh, the first one was kind of like this. It was had a big thing over there, right? The second one, not fantastic. It was kind of more. Um, it was kind of more. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uniform than anything else. However, um, with Medium sample sizes. The um, histograms are nearly normal enough. Okay. And then finally, the last one we need to check here is independence. Um, or independent groups, I should say. And is it safe to assume that the two pizza chains, their, the fat content is not influencing each other? And I think it is. So safe to assume the fat content. Notice how I'm using context from the problem to describe it in the uh, pizzas do not influence each other. So that one's good. Uh, we'll finish this off here by saying uh, conditions are met to perform a two-sample t-test. So there's my assumptions and condition step. Let's go ahead and do my mechanics. Uh, my mechanics is my next step. Again, we've got the formulas for these ones are kind of beastly. And so we're, we are again going to use technology to do that. So we're going to go back to the TI-84 out here. Um, and the software uh, on the calculator that you need to, the, the particular commands you need, excuse me, uh, that is under stat tests. That's where all of our tests are. Uh, we're looking for the one that is a two sample t test. And it turns out that the two sample t test is right there, number four. And just like it did with the one sample means test, you have the, uh, the choice between using data from the calculator and using the statistics that you get here. Uh, where you would need the mean, standard deviation, and sample size for both of the samples to put down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the data because that's what we've got. However, we are going to want to remember to share that information um, as part of the 
uh, AP test, it's okay to write some calculator speak as long as everything is labeled appropriately. Um, you can just take what's on the wizard over here and uh, write those things down as long as you, again, as long as you have everything down. So this was a does not equal to test from the hypothesis. Let's go ahead and calculate it. Uh, so man, we got a lot of things to, to write here. So we've got our T value of 4.82, a P value of, uh, notice the scientific notation there, that's going to be uh, 0.0000315. Uh, my degrees of freedom are 32. I'm going to write all of these things onto my uh, presentation uh, because we want to share that information. Um, so I'm putting it off to the side and I'll make sure that we put it down. Uh, you can't see it because it's on my whiteboard. But uh, again, on the AP test, you want to have you you do have to like label what all of these are, and um, that counts as the showing work. You don't have to have the full formula down um, with everything in it. You can just write what we were doing as part of the uh, the mechanics of the test here. So uh, we've got all that. Let's go back to our uh, problem here. I'm going to clear off some space. Oh, I can't clear off some space because that's old stuff. Uh, that's not going to work. Oh, did I break it? Oh, maybe I didn't break it. Okay. Uh, so let's. Uh, we want to again. We want to copy all of this stuff down. Um, so my two uh, means are 11.25 and 6.53. My two standard deviations were 3.19 and 2.58. Uh, my two sample sizes were 20 and 15. My degrees of freedom was 32. My T value was 4.82 and my P value was 0 0.0000315. So we've got all the information from our mechanics step there with the P value. Let's write our conclusion. And uh, because I'm out of space, I'm just going to write it up here. Uh, so we've got a very small P value. So with a P value, of 0 0.0000315, we reject the null hypothesis. There is evidence to suggest that there is a difference. in the saturated fat content of the two chains. And that's all that told us. Because our null hypothesis alternative is a does not equal to, we can't say that one is bigger than the other, though I think looking at the data, we very clearly know that the actual conclusion of our test says that there's just a difference in the two. Okay. So there's a hypothesis test for the differences. Let's just do a quick confidence interval, and then we'll call it good. Um, we're going to do a 95% confidence interval. Our assumptions and conditions we want to do first. And those assumptions and conditions were checked previously. Again, if you've got to do a uh, confidence interval and or a hypothesis test and then a confidence interval on the AP test, it's okay to write this and only do the assumptions and conditions once. Um, we will proceed with a two sample T interval. And uh, we'll do our mechanics. Again, mechanics, we're going to go to our 
uh, calculator for. The information for that should actually be saved because we did the or the hypothesis test. Uh, we just need the one the command for a two sample t interval now, which we're gonna go down, 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 and there it is, two sample t interval. And uh, it should be if I look at my stats that they saved all of those things. And you might recognize that those are the same numbers as before. Uh, because once you run it in the t-test, your calculator will save it for any other things. So we can go back and do the data one, or we can just uh, you know go through and put the statistics in. Oops, what just happened? I broke it. I broke it. Now it's over here. Put it back over there. Um, so we can go through, and the confidence level is 0.95. We'll leave the pool of no, and then we'll calculate, and there's our confidence interval. So all of that information about degrees of freedom and all of the means and standard deviations, that's all the same. We should still list that as part of our mechanics step, um, but our confidence interval is between 2.72 and 6.70. So let's get all that information down and then write our so, um, again, let's just make sure we are copying all of our information down for the AP test. This counts as showing your work as long as everything is labeled appropriately. Um, so 3.19 and 2.58 and my sample size for the first was 20 and my sample size for the second was 15 which meant that my confidence interval was 2.72 to 6.70. So there's my confidence interval, and then let's write our conclusion. We are 95% confident that the difference in the saturated fat content between the two uh, chains is between 2.72 and 6.70. All right, that one was a little bit longer because we did both a test and an interval, but if you've got questions, make sure you uh, put them in the comments or talk to me somehow, and we'll make sure we get those answered for you. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.